Okay, so Black Dog, great song, a uh, real landmark in rock music and rock guitar playing. There's basically four sections that you need to learn to play this. Okay, so we'll go over all four of those. The guitar track is tripled on this song, okay? So there's three guitars playing throughout the whole thing. They're all kind of doing the same thing, but just little variations, and we'll go over all of that. And then you've got a section where there's harmony, and I think there might even be four guitars in that part, but it's a lot of guitars going on. And the biggest thing about this song, I think, is the timing. There's a lot of weird timing stuff in it, especially that that first turnaround. That one there, and I'll explain that one. That one has had me baffled for a long time, and I think a lot of other people too. Um, and, you know, doing some research on the song and reading some stuff by John Paul Jones, uh, who kind of wrote this one, that was almost his intention, was to come up with something that was really hard to for cover bands to, um, to be able to do. So we'll go over all of that. You know, in between the singing and when the band comes in, it has always been a bit perplexing, I think, for a lot of people. But if you really listen to the track, and probably a lot of you, if you're into, if you want to learn this, you probably already know this, but you can hear um, the drummer, John Bonham, you can hear him tapping the sticks. You don't hear, you don't hear one, two, three, you just hear the last tap, okay? So if you really get your headphones and turn that up there, you can hear the, a little click of the sticks before the band comes in. So he's cueing them on when to come in. So they're not counting some mystical time signature there. He's just cueing them in, okay? So they're following him. And later on in the song, I mean, he cues it every time, but it becomes more, uh, you know, just sort of a, a normal sort of a pattern. Uh, it's not that odd time signature thing. Um, and live, they just play it straight, too, because it's just too hard to uh, be messing around with them um, coming in at weird times like that. Okay, so uh, we'll get into the first lick. So we're here. It's in A, A and we're in this... We're in that A minor pentatonic sort of a shape, right? So the lick starts here on a, a slide up to A7, and then chromatic up from D5 to D7, back to A7, and then we're here on G5. We put a little bend on that, right? And back to D7. And what I do is I like to finger that one with my middle finger on the way down. Because the next move is going to be up here. And I used to play this like this. I don't know if you'd be able to, be able to tell the difference, but I used to play it like this. Okay, so very short. Right? short there, right? But it isn't short, it's long. If you do it with that finger, your next move is up here, right? With your first finger, so that's kind of, you know, it takes a while to get that up there, and you can wind up shorting out that note, okay? So I, I finger it with my middle finger now, and you hold that until you hit that note, so it's a longer hold, okay? Don't do this. You want to do this. Okay, so hopefully you can hear the difference there. You just, you're winding up holding that note a little bit longer, okay? And then we come up here. So it's just G7 to G9. Then a trill from G5 to G7, back down to D7. Okay, some guys will do it here. Like instead of going there, they go here. Um, and you can do that, but... You can, you know, if you don't finger that cleanly, you wind up, you know, hitting that chord, right? And it sounds kind of uh, messy there, so. And I'm pretty sure Jimmy Page comes up here to do the lick, so. That whole lick so far slowly. Okay, and then we just have the descending thing. So we're just here on uh, D5 to D7. 
and then A5 to A7, and then A3 to A5. But we slur that, okay? We kind of slide it down so it goes. So. And as you slide that one down, you're going to upstroke on the uh, G string on that A power chord, right? So. Two downstrokes on the uh, on the A power chord. Okay, so the whole lick. Okay, so that's what the first most prominent guitar does, and then that's doubled, and then there's another guitar that does the exact same thing, but it just ends it different. It ends it like this. Okay, so just slide slide down to the open A two hits on the open A and then a power chord so. okay it's you know that's pretty subtle right but if you're you know in a two guitar band you maybe want to get one guy to do that right and the two together combine nicely okay so that's the main lick so then we're going to go into this turnaround lick and this, I think, is probably the hardest part of the song for anybody who's ever played it, because it, it gets syncopated and it gets real weird. Um, the, oh, just before I move on, when we end that... Okay, on that first couple of times, it's just a straight A chord. Later on, okay, it changes where one guitar does this. Okay, he bends up that uh, G3 to the A note here. Okay, that's, uh, you know, it's weird holding that chord and bending. But that comes in later, really. but the first time it's just... Just a straight A chord. Okay, so now onto the syncopated turnaround. So what we're going to do there... Uh, we're just going to play the same lick, uh, just down a string. So instead of go down a string, okay, and that just repeats a bunch of times. And then it ends on this. Okay, and then we're back into this. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, it's easy to just talk you through that, but the timing there is absolute killer. And it's been screwing me up for like, I guess you could say decades now. But I finally sort of really looked at it and read about it a bit. There's a little bit I'll put in the description box uh, that I found on some interview with John Paul Jones and he explains how that lick works and I remember when I you know, used to talk about that with my buddies and stuff we, we used to think that oh yeah well they, they made a mistake and they just were all catching up but you know there's no way this was planned right from the start um, and apparently from what I read when he first brought this song to the band it was so complex because he was looking for a, a different sort of a time signature. Apparently it was in 316. I don't even know what that is, but so complex, nobody could do it. So they had to change it and simplify it quite a bit. But this part here is still the trick of playing this song, okay? And probably a huge reason why most bands never play this song, other than having a singer that can sing like Robert Plant, right? But this is really tough part to nail. Okay, so I'll explain to you how it works. What I do with that is... It's an eight note riff, okay? So it, that starts on the offbeat. It's like this. Okay, so that's eight eighth notes, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay, and then what happens is there's an eighth note rest before it starts again, okay? So the ninth note is a rest. To count that, you just count it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. Okay, and you'll notice that the it's the first lick is on the offbeat, and because you have that eighth note rest in there, the lick now will start on the downbeat. 
Okay, so it starts on the upbeat, the offbeat, the first time, downbeat the second time, okay, and you do your eight, and you have the ninth is a rest, which will make the lick again start on the offbeat, okay? So it starts on offbeat, onbeat, offbeat, okay? It does three times like that. And then the last lick is just five, right? It's just one, two, three, four, five. And then we're, we're back into that, okay? So that whole lick then, we'll do it real slow and just talk through it, is three groups of eight with nine being a rest, okay? So here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Right, then you're into the main luck, okay? So if you think of it that way, um, you're just dropping an eighth note. It's an eighth note rest every eight beats okay well they're not even beats i'm just starting i'm starting my counting on the lick which is an off beat you know one two three one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine that really helped me sort of sort it out in my mind as to what's going on but still even though i know that now it's still hard to get it's the kind of a lick where you're just going to have to sit down with the track and just kind of get a feel for that, dropping that eighth note, and that which is a very bizarre thing to do, okay? Um, I've been playing guitar quite a while, and I've, I don't know, I've never run into anything like that. Okay, so that's how to do that anyways. Um, and that's basically the second lick that you need to learn. Moving on, that's gonna finish up um, going back to the A lick. <laughs> And then we get into that oh yeah part, right? Which is uh... so it's pretty straightforward there. You're just kind of holding this A chord, and there's three guitars doing all this stuff. So the first guitar is just here, and then here. I'm not going to yell every fret here because it's kind of, it doesn't move around. It's all right down here between the, basically the second and fourth fret. And that chord there, he keeps the A in the bass note, okay? The, the actual bass moves to a C, but the guitar is like playing an A, it's like an A minor 7. Okay, and that does that a bunch of times, and then it eventually ends off. Right, where one of the guitars pulls that uh, E string up to the A, right? And the other guitar just ends it normally. Uh, it just is. Okay, and and the other guitar too is is um, it's doing this. It's going. Okay, so it's a little bit different because it's holding that A note. You can clearly hear that, right? So one guitar is. And the other guitar is just... So that's how that part works. And um, the third guitar is... Uh, it's just basically doubling that first one. right? It's just kind of there just to fill out the sound. So that's that part. And then we've got the Hey Baby thing. Guitars are all doing the same thing except for the chords at the end. So it's always. It's just A to G, right? 
And then this, the very first time when it goes up to the C, it's kind of like, it's a little bend in there. I do it with my little finger, but you can do it with your third finger. So just the first time. And then one of the guitars just does like G, D. And I, the way I do it, I don't know if it's right or not, but I just do that A, C, D, C, G, right? Where you're just muting that A string. You know, instead of that, that third in there, it's just mute the A string and just play all fifths and root, right? And then D. Okay. And just repeats. And then the second guitar is doing this, this chord here. Okay, and those those kind of chords, when you put that third in there, they always sound a little bit sour down in this range of the guitar because of the intonation on guitars. Um, it's not great down in there, but that's what he's playing. So what you can do to smooth that out is just maybe leave out that D, that uh, B string and just go because you can clearly hear that in the recording that that B to A note so a little trick too is, is if you just do the two notes put a little vibrato on it to kind of just smooth out that intonation thing when you play third playing thirds on uh, with distorted guitar is never great you know and uh, I don't know if you know but Eddie Van Halen used to you know when he was playing playing all that um, that kind of stuff he would flat his B string just to just to sort of fix up that that uh, perennial intonation problem with the guitars and playing thirds right anyways so yeah I you just would do this right just to smooth it out a bit okay so that's what the other guitar does and then the third guitar actually just plays single notes so it just goes just emphasizing that that G down to the F sharp right and you put the vibrato on it right so okay and it ends the phrase with just go straight down to the E okay so that's that section there and that's about it except for the end lick where we do the uh, the harmony and what happens is the main guitar it kind of changes a bit it puts a little pull off in so uh, instead of going like this it goes like this a little pull off there that right okay so now the harmony goes up a third and it doesn't do it doesn't follow the main guitar completely okay it doesn't go right it doesn't do that it just goes straight okay so it just goes and it doesn't do the chromatic thing you know you think it would go but it doesn't it goes two notes on that uh, C sharp back down to the A and then we're here on B4 and we bend that and again I want to finger this one now with my middle finger because my next move is up here okay just B7 B8 A little trill between B5 B7 down to G6. Little another bend here in B4. Okay, so so far we've got Okay, and then we finish the phrase off doing this.
B4 to B6, D5 to D7, D2 to D4, and the A power chord, right? Okay, so that whole thing up to speed. And slowly. Okay, and that's it. That, that's the song. And I guess there's that little little thing at the beginning. I, you know, I don't. I think I think he's just just like sawing on his E string there. You know, with some delay. We'll put the delay on here. See what happens. Like I don't even know what he was doing. I think that's what he was doing. Okay. So I mean, if you're in a band and you want to do before the song starts <laughs> might be kind of cool right anyways okay so that's it i hope you get something out of this there's a lot of little little deals in here uh, but mostly it's that syncopated part right Th that'll be the thing that screws up most guys and just remember it's just groups of eight with that ninth beat being a rest okay an eighth note rest so three groups of eight with the ninth beat being the rest, and then one group of five. Right? Okay, very tricky to get that together. Anyways, good luck with it, and like I said, I hope you get something out of the lesson, and we'll talk to you soon.